All right. So I appreciate you doing this. Um, cool. So it's contagious. I don't think we've had a one-on-one -on -one with them before. So this will be good. Um, Hello. We started with the governance model, and then it's turned into the audit layer. So what is the difference between the governance model and the audit layer? Or how does one supersede the other? Um, OK, so broad architecture. To build a governance model, we are trying to kind of build uh, building blocks foundation with the audit layer uh, right now. So the idea is for any governance model to work, you have leaders and you have decision makers. So there are a couple of approaches which you can implement is like you have a leader trying to take policy decision for a group and you elect a particular leader for a term length or you have a council of members which kind of does um, some consensus and come up with the policy decisions. Mm -hmm. Now the idea is like how do you get to that position? How do you become in a untrusted environment? How do you become a leader or how do you become a member of, uh, of a fraternity that has a lot of power across the entire network? Mm -hmm. So the, the the discussion led us like okay stake is an important factor but more than stake like People can be billionaires, but their infrastructure could suck. Yeah. Or someone doesn't just really care about, you know, how to how to correctly optimize their functionality, which right. kind of causes the entire network to suffer. So the idea is like we roll out certain rules or certain uh, parameters based on which we measure performance of each node, each type of node, um, and it kind of gives us a performance metric of how a particular node A behaves differently from node B, mm. which helps us in our unit testing performance measures, as well as over a period of time when we have a audit layer, which kind of supervises all this and can, can kind of come up with a metric that you have a certain set of members who are consistently outperforming the rest of them. Those set of met members get to be part of the governance council to mm. take important decisions. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where this entire thing is going. Sure. So like when you are talking about performance metrics, um, you're talking about like CPU speed or things like that? Um, like uh, how consistent has someone been? Like their, their, their network stability, mm -hmm. their... Uh, their request to responses mm -hmm. in terms of are they consistently two th top two third delegates in terms of building a block are sure. they fastest are uh -huh. they most consistent do they have least amount of conflicts over a period of time uh -huh. uh, those sorts of things are there these are just some of the top level metrics that we have um, uh, but there, there could be many more like how much time someone how many times someone has to care, trigger catch up so uh, like someone is always if some particular node is always lagging behind, mm -hmm. uh, they will have to continuously trigger catch up to kind of catch up to the rest of the network. So if someone is doing that continuously, then there is some issue that they need to debug as to like, is my network slow? Uh, do I have the right hardware? Those questions need to be asked from their point of view. Mm -hmm. um, also, it might very well be possible that someone might be DOS attacking the node or like there might be some security issues with the node where someone is trying to punish that node. We also want to identify that uh, if someone is trying to bully a particular master node or a delegate into in a network, and how do you protect that? Or how do you punish the set of members who are trying to go against, uh, like maliciously acting against certain set of members? Mm -hmm. So the only way to do that is to have uh, an audit layer independently audit all the nodes um, and their um, and, and kind of come up with this. Uh, so first, right now, we are just trying to collect all the data. And then we can come up with some co cohesive algorithm as to how to reward or punish different type of nodes. Mm -hmm. And then we can build that thing into the governance model. Right. So how do you get around the idea of um, the audit layer, like you said, is an independent system? So if it's an independent system, but it's not a system that is centralized on top of the network, how do you make sure that people are following the rules and not 
potentially saying like, oh, this guy keeps on triggering catch up and is slow to respond, but we're going to ignore him potentially. Like, how do you, how do you foresee an audit layer um, working in a decentralized fashion? Uh, so the design is still work in progress. We are trying to establish some parameters to kind of build that. But uh, the idea, initial idea is like we'll have group of witnesses. So we have lot in our network uh, vision, we have large number of witnesses compared to delegates or masters. So we'll have a group of witnesses uh, do an audit on each node. Now, by audit, I mean that each node will have this record of different metrics and indices that will keep an at every event that gets at every every event gets logged into a node. Um, node doesn't know how to interpret that event, but uh, this event kind of goes into its DB and based on this this event log is kind of upstream, kind of moved upstream to these auditors. Mm -hmm. And auditors have this algorithm where they can evaluate each event on behalf of the node and mm -hmm. kind of get, give a kind of come up with a metric or a rating that this is like from last week's rating for node X was this. Like it was based on its performance, based on its like its type, like delegate has different you know, uh, responsibilities to witnesses to and everyone gets audited, even the witnesses. Yeah. So, based on the type and the events that take place, they every node kind of generates this set of events, and auditors are supposed to kind of audit and come up with a rating. Now we'll have group of auditors do that. So basically, group of witnesses or group of nodes would be doing that, and that will change every time. Mm -hmm. So you don't have. Uh, like you don't have repeat auditors for the same node. Uh, so you have rotating things, you have a consensus in terms of a group of auditors are telling you that this is the rating of a particular node. Mm -hmm. You take a mean of it or you kind of come up with a number and that goes to the kind of a governance layer where it is kept. Yeah. And uh, next time the election happens for the council members or for the leader, we take into account that metric to be able to build uh, build a policy or like if you want to do any major changes on network, those council members will be able to take a vote on it. So the idea is that you have these witnesses and they're just storing this information and they're making it accessible to pretty much anybody, but specifically the auditors, right? And Witnesses are the auditors, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So when these events are being stored, they would be uh, kind of processed by, uh, let's say, the delegates or the master nodes when it comes time for the election. And is at that point, is that when um, a decision is made on whether or not uh, one of these actors is performing poorly? Uh, so, okay, so that goes into how do you implement the policy. So mm -hmm. auditors have... Uh, so auditors have two sets of responsibility the way I see it. Auditors is A, they are supposed to generate a, generate a metric of if of a delegate or master is performing good or bad. Also, if there is certain event that needs correction. So let's say uh, Redis has crashed or let's say uh, a master node is missing a particular block or particular set of block is corrupted. Those those set of event are kind of network events and they that needs correction so immediate correction so it will kind of relay the information to the master so if in case of corrupt block it will relay this information to the master that xyz block is corrupt mm -hmm. owned by so and so you need to regenerate that block so master can either get it from their backup copies or they can get it from other masters so there are a couple of ways of recovery so the, so that is a policy that is kind of decided by the governance council. Uh -huh. So that that is that is the algorithm like that will be so when someone is elected as an auditor in case, in our case a witness, uh, this policy would come up. I mean, our right now thinking is like we'll have a contract that would that would kind of enshrine this policy rules of the game. And a witness or anyone would just go through the run through the contract and identify 
if certain actions need to be taken at the network level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you have like these witnesses are the auditors and they are logging all these events. So I guess we kind of had this conversation too. How much of it is like a manual process? Uh, we want to, we don't want it to be manual as much, but again, it's, there are, there are subjective decisions and right. there are very objective decisions yeah. in the process. Uh, yeah, if your hard drive is dead, is like pretty much you can't really do anything. Someone yeah. has to manually go and change it. Yeah. Yes, it will record an event and it will probably send you an alert on your cell phone or something. Uh, but yes, it, it requires a manual intervention. But there are there are uh, there are policy that could be automated. That okay, um, uh, if you have a no uh, master node with the hard drives dead hard drive, then you kind of push him out of protection mechanism, mm-hmm. so that you don't rely on that master to um, uh, to be able to you don't count on that master to be able to provide the block support. So you just move him out of that protection base. So those sorts of policies can be enshrined into into um, into the, the council, and that's when voting can happen. And yeah. that voting can be that need, probably would need to be manual uh, at the right. uh, council level to kind of because it not only requires kind of review of the code, but also kind of think through how the network should proceed. Yeah, because there's the whole question of, like, let's say that I stake a lot of tau for a master node and then something unexpected happens, like a power outage. Do I lose my entire stake because there's an automatic policy that says if a hard drive crashes or a master node's unresponsive, just cut them out, right? Right. And so um, the, the initial determination of all these policies would probably be baked in, right? Mm-hmm. And so we would say, oh... Under these situations, this is the automatic response to some sort of event. Um, this is like the more manual response. Uh, we probably would err on the side of leniency initially and then start to kind of uh, filter towards some sort of uh, automated process. But um, what, how do you kind of like bin initially? What are your initial thoughts on? What can be automated? What is an egregious, like, defiance of the policy? What's, like, a no-go? And then what's something that would be um, up for, like, interpretation by the network? Uh, so so the, this performance matrix and this audit layer gives us an objective outlook on how a particular node is performing. Mm-hmm. So any malicious activity is pretty much no-go. Anything that is critical... So there are different different classification of this event logger one is like uh, the events that are that are that are like errors so you know like there are errors happens um, and you can recover from it so there are error handling events there are critical events which are critical and that are going to hurt my performance mm. so like if if i'm like my network is going up and down it's going to be critical to my uh, me as a node uh, but it's not really critical to the network because network can handle, come up with two-third consensus and still proceed without you. Then there are third type of classification are the, like fatal and critical events where I am kind of giving a bad hash out or I'm, my config resolution is not proper and mm-hmm. I'm causing the network to do more work. Mm-hmm. Uh, this could be like malicious or it could be like genuine. I mean, there is some, some yeah, problem, yeah, right? Yeah. We don't know. Um, but those are the fatal fatal category of events. So this classification helps auditors to come up and kind of move this data to the governance layer. And then at that state, if, if we decide that we want to automate, like do we kick someone out or do we, uh, do we want stake to be reduced mm-hmm. or some punish, the, some, that rules can be defined at that state. Yeah. But that would require like, I think much more aggressive testing and yeah. deployment to be so, able to come up with it. So like the general life cycle of a policy, and I guess we as like the creators of the network would decide initially what's a fatal and what's um, to be voted on, right? right? But that would potentially mutate over time. But the life cycle seems to be it's events that are gathered. There's some sort of policy between filtering that as whether or not it's like a good or bad thing. Like latency 
if it falls within a certain range, exactly. it's good or bad. And yes. then there's a response to it. Right. And then all of those things could be mutable, right? right? So it's like how much of it can really be automated or tuned online. And that's kind of like the big question about the layer. Um, so I think the I think one of the things we discussed, the idea is like, let's say someone in the network decides that I want to go get a contract out that... Uh, if your latency or uh, if your latency is beyond certain threshold, mm -hmm. you deduct X amount of stake yeah. from that node. And uh, if everyone in the governance council approves that, then that contract goes as part of the network set of rules. Right. And then that's, you take it from there. Yeah. So yes, initially we define the metrics and how do you, but eventually it can be taken over by governance council and people who want to make the decision yeah because yeah. we could we could be um chugging along and then realize that a latency which we thought was uh fatal is not really a big deal right. or vice versa yeah. right and we yeah same thing in. like uh, like how many blocks per minute you want like how do you want to create number of blocks mm -hmm. one day one hour one minute mm -hmm. that sh that sh the decision should be based on business use cases and yeah. how much traffic you're not getting over the network yeah because that's going to directly translate into your storage uh getting utilized and maintenance requirements and additional processing mm -hmm. so yeah really like really heavy traffic you want to increase your network size quickly get more nodes in you you those should have been those should be mutable yeah. yes so a lot of it is lesser so about kind of um because I think publicly we've discussed and kind of outlined governance as a reward structure for nodes, but this is far beyond that. Like that's like one small policy. Right. And this is more like, okay, the um, gathering of information. It is reaction. kind of falls into the DAO structure, like decentralized yeah. autonomous governance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The regime. So mm -hmm. yeah, if we ever decide to like completely full-fledged implement that, this is... Uh, this is kind of building a like a building blocks for that. Like, okay, you have small building blocks based on which you can truly like make it artificial intelligent system yeah. that would that would govern itself. Right, yeah. right. And I think that's powerful because like the business use case that we have right now for the public network is much different than potentially a private deployment. So right. you might have like a consortium of people who are all aligned and want to be very strict, mm -hmm. or they would have their own policies and things like that. And so being able to construct those is really important. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, I guess to wrap up, what are what are you excited for? Uh, it's a big project. So yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about if I can get it to a level where you can truly have a AI-based, like, autonomous decision-making capability mm -hmm. without with minimum human intervention yeah uh, yeah and how the system and network behaves that would be truly a unique project yeah if, I mean other than blockchain itself it would be like a because there will be so many applications if you can do oh, sure. that. yeah sure yeah. yeah yeah not even just blockchain yeah. but like it can be a product in itself right yeah uh, yeah. yeah well cool well thanks Tejas yeah, uh, this was time. this was good, yeah. and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Yeah, I read all, a lot of his documents to get. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, cool. So, Appreciate yeah. it. All right. Thanks for doing that. That was good.